Now, I didn't spend copious amounts of time and energy in engineering school to not put those skills to good use. What's up, you guys? My name's Austin. I'm a mechanical engineer and I make stuff. Usually, it's boring stuff, but every now and then, I like to actually come in and make something that's just fun. So, today we're designing and 3D printing some shoes. Yes, you heard that right, 3D printing shoes. Uh, basically, I was stuck between these and these, obviously, both of which are fantastic options, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with these. Now, spoiler alert. Yes, that is dry humor, but since I'm making these from scratch, that means I get to make any changes that I want to this design. Uh, okay, let's just jump into it. Now, I don't actually have a pair of the originals here with me, so that means I'm using basically a rough idea of what they look like in my head, as well as some Google images. I'm gonna design these here in Fusion 360 and then 3D print them from this flexible material, starting now. That there was about three to four hours of work in roughly maybe five to 10 seconds. The things that we do for YouTube, but nonetheless, let's really get into it. So when it comes to 3D printing, it's usually done in a hard plastic material. Now that obviously is not the best option for a pair of shoes, or I might as well wear these or these. <laughs> Imagine that. So we're gonna use what's called uh, thermoplastic polyurethane or TPU for short. Now TPU comes in a bunch of varieties of different flexes, but uh, I'm using a pretty basic one here as we can actually go in and custom adjust the thickness and the density of the shoe to make it basically as squishy as we want, uh, which is a lot easier than messing around with materials. So for the first one here, I'm gonna keep it pretty solid. I'm actually gonna print it at a 40% infill. Now the infill is that internal honeycomb part. I'll show that on the screen here. Uh, basically we're filling up 40% of the void space instead of just making it one solid object. Now the advantage of this is less material, shorter print time, and the, the shoe will actually have some flex to it. So in theory, it will be pretty comfortable, but it is also worth noting that when I say a shorter print time, well, each half of one shoe took about 20 hours, meaning that altogether to actually 3D print one full shoe, it was roughly 80 hours of print time with all the little accessories and stuff that you're gonna see here. So yes, it's really, really slow, but that's too many numbers. Uh, cue the time-lapse of the 3D print. Okay, I think those time lapses are really cool. Hopefully you think so too. But now about the shoe. So I made the shoe in a size 10, so in theory it's actually going to fit. But I do have to admit that time lapse that you saw was actually just a miniature version uh, of the shoe printed in that hard plastic that I was talking about earlier. It's nearly impossible to do one of those time lapses and get a really good quality of print while the time lapse is going. Nonetheless, let's check out those shoes. So here we have the two main body pieces of the shoe. Now I had to split it up such that basically the two uh, pieces that will go on the bottom of the shoe are separate as well as the band that goes around the back and the little pins uh, that hold it together. Now, if you're wondering why they had to be printed separately, it's basically because it's really hard to 3D print complex geometry. So I had to go ahead and split them. And as you can see, it's not the most convenient thing ever, but it is a lot easier to 3D print them separately and then basically just glue them together uh, as you're gonna see in a minute. Now, speaking of glue, I love different products, gadgets, widgets, you name it. This glue that I recently discovered is a game changer. Okay, this is a super glue plus activator spray. If you're like me and you're always tinkering around, definitely check this stuff out. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's actually put this shoe together. Okay, and we have it. So here is uh, one of our Crocs. Now, hopefully that footage looked okay. I'm basically like trying to do this while looking through the iPhone here. This is how I filmed that. So it wasn't very easy to uh, actually put all the pieces together, but I think that the Croc looks pretty good. As you saw, I took the two main red pieces, stuck them together, put on the bottoms, and then basically just installed this little hinge here. Uh, let me know what you think. I think it turned out pretty well. 
Okay, and now the real test. Uh, is it comfortable and does it fit? Let's check that out right now. Okay, so it's actually not bad at all and it does fit, which is excellent. I'm gonna be honest, the 40%, I knew that was on the upper side of the sort of density to compression ratio, but it is definitely too much for this shoe. So the next one, I'm actually gonna print it with just a 25% uh, infill and I think that will help and actually make the shoe a lot more comfortable. So here we go, here is the 25% one. Let me try and show you the difference. Um, as you can see, the 25% infill shoe has a lot more give to it, which in theory should translate to a much more comfortable shoe. Let's test that out now. Okay, 25% is definitely the way to go. As you saw from the thumbnail, we now have to add some flair to the shoes because there's no point in designing something from scratch if you're just making the exact same thing. So let's just add uh, a couple little pieces. Now, I could add this text and element in Fusion 360, but for fun, let's go ahead and let's use Tinkercad because then I could do a little hand-drawn arrow, which you'll see now. Yep, that looks good there. Now, if these are not a solid 3D printed shoe, then I don't know what is. I could actually wear these around and I'm not just saying that. Are they the best? Absolutely not. Would they be that comfortable? Probably not after a long time, but they do 100% serve the purpose of uh, just being a shoe. Now, I'm limited to the actual testing of these because it's basically minus 30 outside here in Canada. But all in all, frankly, I am surprised at the success of this project. I think it worked out uh, really good and that's pretty much it for this one. So if you guys like this video and you want me to do more projects like this, then go ahead, hit the subscribe button, uh, drop me a comment below. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.